Today we're going to be talking about how to use chain rule for multivariable functions and in this particular video we're more specifically going to be talking about how to use a tree diagram to outline the application of chain rule for multivariable functions and essentially what we've been asked to do is find the derivative of a multivariable function. Well, since we need to find the derivative of a multivariable function, we have to use partial derivatives. And when we use partial derivatives for multivariable functions and we need to find the derivative, tree diagrams can help us make sure we get it right. So let's look at two different examples. The first one here is the example on the left. We've been given three functions, one for u, one for x, and one for y. We've been told that u is in terms of x and y. And then we've also been told that x is in terms of t and y is in terms of t. This is called a case one type partial derivative or multivariable function. And the reason it's called case one is because there's only one independent variable and that's t. So if we use a tree diagram to outline this, it'll become much clearer. So we say, we've we been told that u is in terms of x and y, right? So what we'll do is we'll say u is at the top and it's in terms of x and y. So we'll make a tree diagram like this and we'll say, u is in terms of x and y. Now, no matter how many variables they give you here, you can just make your tree larger. So if you were in terms of x, y, and z, you could add a third branch here and say it's also in terms of z. So however many variables you're gonna say, u in terms of all of the variables here. Then we've been told that x is in terms of t. So off of x here, we're gonna have this single variable t. We've been told that y is also in terms of t, so we're gonna have one variable here, t. And again, if you've been given multiple variables here in these functions, you can expand your tree diagram to include those as well. This type of situation is called case one because there's only one independent variable, and that's t. What we know is that this lowest level here is the independent variable. The highest level here, u, is the dependent variable and anything between is an intermediate variable that allows you to put the dependent variable in terms of the independent variable. Notice that we don't have a direct relationship between u and t in any of these equations. We only have u in terms of x and y and then x and y themselves in terms of t. So we really have to go through x and y in order to get from u to t and that's why we call x and y intermediate variables. Now, if we wanna write out a model for the derivative of this function, this multivariable function, what we'll do is write it out in terms of partial derivatives. Now, because this is a case one type function, we know that we're only gonna have one partial derivative and it's gonna be the partial derivative of u with respect to t. You always need one partial derivative for every dependent variable in terms of every independent variable. Since we only have one and one, we only need one partial derivative. So we're gonna say the partial derivative of u with respect to t, the dependent variable in terms of the independent variable. And now here's where we use chain rule and our tree diagram to help us outline what this partial derivative is going to look like. So we have to go through the intermediate variables. So what that means is that we're gonna have the partial derivative of u with respect to x, and we're gonna be going down this branch of our tree diagram here. But then according to chain rule, we have to multiply that by dx dt. So we'll multiply by dx dt. This combination here, this product of functions allows us to take the partial derivative of u with respect to t by going through x. Then we just add to that the other branch of our tree diagram. So we'll say the partial derivative of u with respect to y, now going in the other direction, down the other branch of our tree diagram. But then of course we have to multiply by dy over dt to get u in terms of t. So that's how you write out a case one partial derivative, which remember is when you just have one independent variable and one dependent variable. Now, if we look at this second example here, giveaway, this is going to be a case two type partial derivative or type function. We have u in terms of two variables, x and y, and then x and y each in terms of three variables. In this case, we have one dependent variable in terms of multiple, in this case, three, independent variables. If you have multiple independent variables, 
that means you have a case two type function. So again, use, we'll use a tree diagram to outline this. We'll say u is in terms of x and y, so x and y here, and then x is in terms of r, s, and t. So we're gonna have a tree diagram like this where x is in terms of r, s, and t. Y is also in terms of R, S, and T, so we'll say R, S, T like this. And as you can see now, we have this one dependent variable going through two intermediate variables to get to three independent variables. When you have multiple independent variables like this, you're gonna need multiple partial derivatives because you're gonna need a partial derivative of U with respect to R, U with respect to S, and U with respect to T. So let's go ahead and start writing them out. We'll say u with respect to r is going to be the partial derivative of u with respect to x, going down this leg of our tree diagram, multiplied by the partial derivative of x with respect to r. Now notice something here that's different than our case one function. Before, when we only had one independent variable, we multiplied here by dx over dt because x was only in terms of one variable. Here, x is in terms of three variables, so we're still needing to take a partial derivative of x with respect to r. Here, we could only take it with respect to t. There was one variable. We could call this dx over dt, but when there's multiple independent variables, we're gonna have all partial derivatives. We'll never have this dx dt notation. It's all partial derivatives. So for u with respect to r, notice that we have u with respect to r here, but we also have u with respect to r here. We need to include both of those in our partial derivative for u with respect to r. We've taken care of the x branch, but we need to add to that the partial derivative of u with respect to y multiplied by the partial derivative of y with respect to r. This gives us a complete picture of the partial derivative of u with respect to r by using x and y as intermediate variables. Now, because we have three independent variables, we're gonna need three partial derivatives. So we'll say u with respect to s and u with respect to t, and we'll go ahead and find those. So again, here we'll have the partial derivative of u first with respect to x, that gets us to here. But then to get down to this s here, we'll have to multiply by the partial derivative of x with respect to s. Then we'll add to that on the other leg of the tree diagram, the partial derivative of u with respect to y multiplied by the partial derivative of y with respect to s. And hopefully you're seeing the pattern now so that you know that for t, we'll have to take the partial derivative of u first with respect to x, then multiply that by the partial derivative of x with respect to t, adding to that, partial derivative of u with respect to y multiplied by the partial derivative of y with respect to t. And that's it. That's how you can use a tree diagram to help you outline the partial derivatives for either a case one or a case two type function when you're trying to use chain rule to take a partial derivative. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.